We're going to look at the chapter 2 of Daniel. And uh, read through that together. Will you guys stand with me? Everybody find it? Okay. It says in the beginning of chapter 2, And in the second year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar dreamed dreams wherewith his spirit was troubled and his sleep break from him. Then the king commanded to all the magicians, the astrologers, and the sorcerers, and the Chaldeans to, for, to show the king his dreams. They came and stood before the king, and the king said unto them, I have dreamed a dream, and my spirit was troubled to know the dream. Then spank the then spake I guess Hello. Then spake the Chaldeans to the king of Syriac, O king, live forever. Tell thy servants the, the dream, and we will show the interpretation. The king answered and said to the Chaldeans, The thing is gone from me. If ye will not make known unto me the dream with the interpretation thereof, ye shall be cut in pieces, and your houses shall be made a dunghill. But if ye show me the dream and interpretation thereof, you shall receive of me gifts and rewards of great honor, and therefore show me the dream and the interpretation thereof. Verse 7. They answered again and said, Let the king tell his servants the dream, and we will show the interpretation of it. The king answered and said, I know of certainty that ye would gain the time, because ye see the thing is gone from me. But if ye will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. Ye have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me, till the time be changed. Therefore I tell me the dream, and I shall know that ye can and show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans and answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, or ruler that asks such things of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods who dwelling is not flesh. You know what's interesting to me, and I'm not finished yet, but we're uh, down in, in, in verse 11, it's interesting to me that sometimes when we're called into account, we act just like these people, right? How could you ask me that? This isn't my sermon at all, but it's good stuff. It's because as I was reading, I was thinking, how many times are we asked or called into account for our actions? And we're like, well, why would you ask me that? And we act like it's it's an un, un, unreasonable thing for somebody to call us into question. And the same thing is happening here. For this cause, in verse 12, for this cause the king was angry and furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. And the decree went out forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellows to be slain. Then, Antil, then Daniel Ansel answered with counsel and wisdom to Arioch, the king of the king's God the captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men in Babylon. He answered and said to Arioch, the king's captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Arioch Arioch made the the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions. Um, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Verse 19, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and he sitteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. In verse 22, he revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee and praise thee, O God for, of the, my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might and it has known unto me now what was desired of thee. For thou hast now made known unto us the king's matter. Therefore Daniel went into Arioch, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon 
Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, destroy not the wise men of Babylon, bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. Then Ariak brought in Daniel before the king in haste, and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen in interpretation thereof? Let's look at verse 27 and 28 very closely. Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, the secret with the king hath demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, or the soothsayers show unto the king. But there is a God in heaven that revealeth secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar that they shall be in the latter days. Thy dream and thy visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. And as for thee, O king, thy thoughts come into thy mind, unto thy bed, and should come to pass whereafter. And he that revealeth secrets maketh known to thee what shall come to pass. Let's stop there. Father, I thank you for your word tonight. And I ask you, God, that you will bring truth in our hearts and alive in our words tonight, God. Father, thank you for making it fresh. And God, I pray that you will direct us and that you will give us an understanding. Because, God, we know all good and perfect things comes from you. We love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I love reading God's word. And sometimes when I, I, I get into it and I start reading, I get carried away. And I'll start reading and reading and reading and reading. And I kind of lose sight of where I want to go. And, and all these things fill my head. And so tonight, I just want to talk to you a little bit about what's going on here in Daniel 2. We see that Nebuchadnezzar, he has this dream. And he is asking somebody to tell him what the dream means. He wants to understand it. But he is fearful, and he, the, the dream has given him fear, and he wants to know exactly what it means. Except he doesn't really trust that if he tells somebody what the dream was, that they would tell him what it really meant. And so he, he's, he's looking for a way to figure it out with all these people that have been around him and that have provided him insight and counsel in the past. What's interesting to me is that he had relied on them in the past. He had probably wasn't the first dream. It probably wasn't the first time he'd called these counselors in to have an understanding, but here he was, and somehow he had called into question, could they really understand this very, very tough dream that he had had? And they do what sometimes we do. We say, well, tell me a little more about it, and then I'll know how to pray, or I'll know what to do. Give me a little more. And the king was really wanting to understand something deeper. He wanted to know that these guys really understood it. And so he challenged them. You tell me the dream yourself. They thought it was crazy. You can't do that. None of us can do that. They recognized, as we sometimes need to recognize in our own life, we're nothing. We might be called into question, we might be called in on our own account, but we really don't have a lot to stand on unless it's Jesus, right? And so we're learning in the word here that Daniel is preparing to demonstrate to the king, the kingdom, and all those around that God is the source and he's the strength. That all things need to come down to that very basic thing where we rely on him. It almost got the king's wise men killed because they couldn't explain the dream. The wise men were called in to, to give account and they couldn't. And it almost caused them their life. I would say sometimes when we can't 
provide what people need, we may be put in very similar positions. You say, you can't predict that, J.D. I can tell you that in my own life, there's been many times that I've been called in to question my beliefs or my understanding. And I've had to rely on God to give me the strength for whatever the battle. It wasn't mine. I'm not fighting and warring against flesh and blood. I'm not fighting and warring against people. It's powers and principalities. The, bi the battle isn't mine. And so I got to rely on God. The stakes were high for these folks. They were going to be killed. He said he was going to cut them in pieces. But Daniel followed the process that can help us. He understood exactly what can happen. Daniel said, don't panic. And then ask why. Ask for more time. Sometimes when things come at us, we need to just take a moment. Take a little bit of time. We need to take some time and really pray and ask God, what does he want? What is he looking to do in our lives? We need to not get in a hurry, not get panicked about the things that are taking place, but give some time to pray and ask for direction. He gathered prayer partners he said, you know what, let's come together and let's pray for this thing that God would reveal to us. Prayed for help. Ask God for supernatural help. Worship God. Tell the Lord how great and marvelous he is. He loves to hear it. As a human, I love to hear, good job, pastor. Or good job, you know, when I finished lunch this morning, the, uh, the folks said, man, that was really good pot roast. Made me feel good. It made me feel good. I like to hear that what I've worked hard at means something to somebody. And Jesus, I don't think is any different. He likes for us to tell him, good job, Lord. Did you see this morning in service that someone was saved, Lord, under anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit? Lord, good job. Thank you, Lord, for letting us be a part of that. I've been thanking him all day long for the power that was in this place this morning, the power that I knew would be here tonight. I was saying, Lord, it is great to trust you. It is great to be in your presence. Tell him. Use what you've learned to save others. Learn what you've been through. Take those things and help people understand. Then God showed up. Then Daniel used the opportunity to point everyone to God. And that's the key. Is what will we do with the things that God has brought us through? Will we point the credit to our Lord? And will we use every opportunity to show someone else Jesus? Will we take the opportunity of whatever the Lord has brought us through to show people that God is mighty and that he has the power to break the strongholds that we talked about this morning and he has the power to set us free. And when people see us free, then they will say, I want a part of that. If people see us all bound up and worried about what might happen to us, we may be cut into pieces because we may not have all of the answers and we get scared and we get worried. We're not showing people the power of our God. Because if you think our God was worried about Nebuchadnezzar's dream, he was not. He knows everything from the beginning to the end. He's not worried about things that happen in your life. He's not troubled by some disappointment you experience. He's not confused by it. I loved in the scriptures where it says that he appoints kings and he takes them down. He sets up kingdoms and he brings kingdoms down. He changes things. Our God is seasonal. There are things that God will do 
for a period of time. Have you ever been there and you feel God's presence so strong? I mean, it was good today. Amen. It was good. It was good in here and you could feel it. But you know what? My God is the God when you cannot feel it. There are times and the power is so strong. And then there are times when God is just silent. And you're crying out and he's saying, trust me. Trust me and know that I am God. And so I I look at this and I think, well, God, let's put this in perspective. You have the ability to do all things. My job is to point people to you. My job is to remind people that it's not through our own power. It's not through anything that we have done, but it is the power of God at work in us. And he should be lifted and glorified. The Bible says that Daniel told the king, there are no wise men. There's no musicians. There's no magicians. There's no fortune tellers who can reveal the king's secret. But there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets and has shown Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Daniel wanted Nebuchadnezzar to know that God understood his dream. And that God had given him something that would remind him and give him a vision of what was to come. Daniel understood it. Now I tell you your dream and the visions you saw as you lay on your bed. And we see it. Daniel didn't take credit for the amazing answer to the king's dream. Daniel was the only one in the entire kingdom that could do it. He was the only one that was going to be able to interpret this dream. He was the only one that was able to set the Chaldeans free and to keep them from being cut to pieces. It would have been very easy when God uses us to point to ourselves, to pat ourselves on the back. I've told you guys before, one time when I was having a little trouble in church, I I decided, well, Lord... If this is what I'm going to walk through, me and my big bucks, we're out of here. And you know what he said to me? I don't need your big bucks. You know what I'm going to do? You think you're so big and so important? I'm going to bring 10 people who does more than you've ever done in this place. Because it doesn't rely on you. That's how God works. We're not going to hold God hostage. We're not going to put him hostage to us. He has the ability to look at it and say, I know what you need. And I know what the future holds. And he's saying, trust me and know that I am God. He knew God had given him the answer, so he was honest about that. I don't know about you, but if I were a 17-year-old boy and I did something to make a king happy, I'd be tempted to take a little credit. Amen? I'd be tempted to take a little credit on it and say, well, I didn't do all of it, but it's a good thing I was there. (laughs) I mean, you know, it's a good thing I was there. Uh, Matthew was over at my house working on the fireplace last night. And and I'll just tell you, I didn't do one thing. But it's a good thing I was there. Because I don't think he would have known what to do without me. I can't take the credit. If he said to me, he said, cut this five and an eighth. And I looked at Justin and I said, where's the eighth? (laughs) I get the five. Where's the eighth? (laughs) Justin drew it on the board, and I cut it and handed it to Matthew. And he said, (laughs) good, nice try. Well, let's cut that again. So there's two of us that don't know what an eighth is. (laughs) I don't know why I tell on myself. Daniel did the praying. He did the listening. He did the obeying. But he couldn't take any credit for it. And sometimes that gets us as Christians. I look at what God's doing in our church. This morning, 201 people in this building. It's not the people. But I can also tell you with this, it ain't me. (laughs) It ain't me. I can tell you that the only reason God is anointing us 
in blessing us is because we're making time for it. Because we recognize we're nothing without him. I don't want to be in a place that relies on me. Oh, I know what it's like. I've worked, I've worked in, in great companies. I've been on Wall Street. I've been in large board meetings. I've been in all those places. But I don't want to be anywhere without Jesus. I know that for certain. And I know whether God used me in a board meeting in Wall Street on Fifth Avenue in New York City or whether he called me to be right here. I know that he had a purpose for every one of those moments. And that it was not because I was smart. It was not because I was driven. But it was because of obedience. And he is asking us to be obedient unto him. He's saying, I will use you in great ways, but I want you to understand I'm God. And I'm to be lifted up. And I'm to be praised. See, he was obeying. He couldn't take the credit. And he didn't. Oh, I love it when I read the scripture and it says, to them that is given much, much is accounted. To them that are faithful with a little, he will give us more. See, sometimes we look at it and say, why isn't God blessing my life? Why isn't God doing these great things in my life? You know why? Because we're not faithful with what we have. We're not trusting him with what little we have. Therefore, he cannot provide us much because we would be even less faithful. We think it came on our own. And it doesn't come because of us. It comes because of him. Do that and God will bless you. God will do great things to a person who doesn't care who gets the credit. I think this is a good lesson in business in anything else we do in life. I think it is best to give someone else the credit for whatever's happening and you will find yourself happy. Amen. When you start fighting people for credit, whether it's in the church or in business or anywhere else, when you want to take the place and make yourself higher than others, you will be extremely unhappy. But when you take the place and say, you know what? I may have cooked the whole meal at church, but I'm going to bless everyone else for doing it. Or I may be the only one out there knocking on doors and bringing in people to church. But you know what? I'm going to bless the Lord and give others credit. Because they may be doing things that allows you the time to do what you need to do. It's a bold witness for Jesus when we give him the credit. It's what evangelism is all about. God wants you to do in every situation of your life, whether you're in a coffee shop, in a meeting, or at home, parenting a child. He wants you to give him the credit. My son often, sometimes he listens to these on Monday mornings, so I have to be careful. But... My son will usually tell me what a good daddy I am. And I know that means I'm going to get a request tomorrow. <laughs> but I love hearing it anyway. I love for him to say, Dad, you are the best dad in the entire world. And I usually respond with, Son, I know God has given me great strength to be your daddy. I want him to realize that if there's any part of me that is good, it is because my father is supplementing for my weaknesses. Because when I am weak, he is strong in my life. That's what I want. Read a bit further in Daniel 2 and you will see how this story turned out. The Bible tells the entire, Dan, tells the pagan king, uh, uh, 
And Daniel was able to speak to him and said, Truly your God is the greatest of gods, that the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. See, Nebuchadnezzar heard from Daniel, and it was confirmed in him that Daniel knew. And because of that, Daniel didn't take credit. He gave it to the Lord. And therefore, Nebuchadnezzar recognized the power of our God. That will happen in our lives if we will just release the credit to our Lord and say, Lord, whatever good thing is in me, it's because of you. If it's your talent, I've met a lot of talented people. I'm not one of them, but I've met a lot of them. And I'll tell you, the ones that have stuck in my mind who mean the most to me are the ones who say, it's not me. It's him. It's him. It's him. I complimented someone this morning on the work in the service. And what stuck out to me is my response back was, we serve a mighty God. It said, I'm not taking credit. It's him. He's at work. You know what it said to me? It said, you're a humble servant. You're a humble servant that you would give your master the credit for the moving, for what he's doing. You see, the pagan leader acknowledged the true creator of the universe. When you spend your life pointing people to God, miracles will happen in your life. Great things will happen when you point them to Jesus. Describe what you've learned from someone and tell them, tell them what you've gone through. And explain to them how you've relied on the Lord to help you through something. Share your experiences. Sometimes we get embarrassed and we think, they'll think very little of me if I don't take credit for this. In the corporate world, it's what eats the corporate world up. Because if something great happens and, and you experience a great windfall in your budgets or you have a great successful year, you want to take credit for it and all your peers want to as well. And therefore, it keeps you at each other's throats. It's very revealing when you speak to someone and say, man, you contributed greatly to the success here. You did a, a good thing helping me. You did a good thing, and because of that, it was successful. Our pride sometimes keeps us from pointing people to Jesus. Our pride sometimes takes control of us, and we don't give the credit where the credit belongs. I don't care how talented or how great you may think you are. There is someone God has prepared to fill your place. There is someone who God is using in a mighty way. And when you fail to give him the credit for what you have accomplished through him, he will set up other kingdoms. Because our God is not mocked. And our God will use those who give him glory and him alone. Will you bow your heads with me? Father, I love you for your word. And Lord, I'm thankful that I didn't have to be a great orator to, to be able to read it and for it to mean something to our hearts. I'm thankful, Lord, that Every time we open these pages and we read your word, God, that you bring it to life in our hearts. Thank you for your word tonight, Lord. And I know, Lord, that every great and perfect thing that you are doing in our midst, all credit belongs to you. 
you are mighty. And I thank you, God. I thank you for your enduring love. I thank you for your patience, Lord. I thank you, God, that you see past our faults. God, I pray tonight that as we close this service, that, Lord, you will speak to our hearts and remind us you are the life that has breathed into us. And because of that, we have the ability to live life abundantly and full. Thank you for your presence.